Ramones. And I'm Alan Arkish, and I directed Rock and Roll High School. So, hello to everyone here at the Rock Island Public House Drive-In. See, we got a pretty good crowd out there. All right, the drive-ins. Well, I haven't been in a drive-in in a long time, and it's so appropriate that Rock and Roll High School would be showing at a drive-in, because that's kind of what we made the movie for. Uh, that's me, back in 1978. What do you think? I haven't aged a day. All right. So, how come this movie was made for drive-ins? Well, back in the 50s, a man by the name of Roger Corman started producing teen movies. And these teen movies had titles like uh, I Was a Teenage Werewolf, Little Shop of Horrors, Bucket of Blood, Mask of the Red Death, The Wild Angels, uh, Caged Heat. These were all uh, movies that he would make himself or hire film students to make. And they played in drive-in theaters all across America and they were aimed at teenagers in the counterculture. And they also played in what were called grindhouse theaters, which are theaters in downtown cities on double or triple bills. And Roger made a lot of money doing those movies. And he would look for people to uh, direct those movies. And I started working for Roger in um, 1974. And soon I kind of had his trust, and I told him I really wanted to make a high school movie. What I didn't tell him was I wanted to do something different. I wanted to do a high school musical, and all of Roger's movies with young women and were R-rated. They all had uh, breast nudity, and that was kind of the rule. But I did not want to do that. So we started developing what became Rock and Roll High School, and it was called Girls' Gym, okay? Now, Girls' Gym had uh, gymnastics in it, new gymnastics in it. But I uh, worked on the script with uh, Joe McBride, and uh, Joe came up with the idea of the kids going out on strike, and there was a band in the movie, and at the end, they blew up the high school, and I was able to talk Roger out of the new gymnastics and into the music, and it became Disco High. Now. I kept developing it, and there's no way you can blow up your high school to disco music. You have to blow up your high school to rock and roll. How do I know this? Right? I'm a prisoner of rock and roll. This is my record collection. I mean, I've been collecting records since 1964, since Meet the Beatles. And this is just some of my Ramones memorabilia. I worked in rock and roll theaters. So I wanted a band for the movie that spoke about the rough edges of rock and roll that seemed to be out of control. And Rocket to Russia was the album for me. Um, so we got to make the movie, and it was the first Corman movie to actually have a soundtrack album it was going to be released with a record company, and we had a release pattern and everything, and people really liked the movie, and it was supposed to open in the summer, but there was a problem, and we ended up opening at drive-in theaters in Texas and New Mexico, where the Ramones are never heard of in 1978, and there was a tropical storm, and we made $150 at the box office in New Mexico. And uh, Johnny Ramone called me, and he was really pissed off. Uh, but, uh, well, we did what we could. Uh, the movie was basically dead, so I made a phone call, and I spoke, and I said, Joey, here's Joey. I said, Joey, we got to do something. So the Ramones went to San Francisco and did a bunch of concerts there and helped promote the movie, and it did okay. And then it played in Chicago on a double bill in these downtown grindhouse theaters with Dawn of the Dead and Grease, and people loved that combination. And we got great reviews from Ebert and Siskel, and, uh, who said, maybe this movie should play at midnight. Right, Joey? Right. And here we are today, 45 years later. So you can get what you want if you work for it and fight for it. And this, a little history, this is the seed of Rock and Roll High School. This is Fort Lee High School in Fort Lee, New Jersey. This is where I went to school. And even though I went to school in the 60s, this high school was like in the 40s and the 50s. And I used to stare out the window of my high school and dream that the Rolling Stones or the Kinks were going to come to my high school and play. And that's where I got the idea for Rock and Roll High School. And of course, once I met the Ramones, 
Joey and I became very, very good friends. And uh, I was very sad when he passed away, but I really think they're one of the greatest bands of all time. And as important as they are to the movie, the key to the movie is Riff Randall. Her self-determination, the fact that she doesn't take shit from everyone, the fact that she has a dream, and the fact that she's treated with respect in the movie. Because you see, Riff is based on real people. This is Janice. And this is Gail. Gail is Riff Randall, okay? I knew Janice and Gail from the Fillmore East. They used to come to every show in the late 60s to see The Who and the Led Zeppelin and Jimi Hendrix and The Doors. All these legends play there, and they'd come, and I'd get them seats. And this is their friend, the guitar player by the name of Johnny Thunders. And he started a band called the New York Dolls, if you're a rock fan. Well, Gail still has a rock and roll heart. And here we are in San Diego about eight or 10 months ago. So if any of you have a dream and uh, you want to fulfill that dream, just keep fighting for it. And like Riff Randall, don't take shit. Assert yourself. Right, Joey? Oh. Oh. All right. I almost forgot. Okay. Before we start the movie, there's a little thing Joey wants to do with us. You ready? Hey. Ho. Let's go. Hey. Ho, let's go. Hey, ho, let's go. Enjoy the movie, everybody. Hey, ho.